Okay, hello there. So in today's lecture, I'm going to look at uh, the topic of interaction. So we're dealing with the same set of data from this company, uh, and we're still investigating products uh, that they've given us data on. And it, over the last six weeks, and in particular the last five week, weeks, um, apart from the introduction, we looked at different aspects of visualization using different types of chart. So each week we've looked more or less at different types of chart. In today's lecture, um, we're going to look at how we might do interactive versions of those. So we're not going to see any different, any new charts. We're going to see how to do interactive versions. Uh, so we'll see line plots, we'll see histograms, we'll see scatter plots, we'll see bubble plots, um, and we'll see interactive versions of all of those things. Okay, uh, interaction is a, a very useful feature, but there's a bit of a trade-off when you want to do interaction because um, sometimes it can be harder to construct interactive code. And we'll see, particularly when we do dashboards next week, that, that they, they're, they're much more involved. Uh, they're not too hard, but they are much more involved than just doing a regular visualization. But having done them, of course, the user has much more opportunities to, to investigate the data on their own. So if you were doing exploratory data analysis for yourself, you might not bother with uh, interactive versions, because after all, you could just you know, you want to see some zoom in on something, you can just change the visualization. And we have done that in examples before. Although, you know, sometimes the, it's worth investing that effort uh, at the beginning because interactive visualization can save you time in the long run. Um, however, if you're doing it for somebody else, it can be really worth the effort because it allows, rather than the user specifying what they want and you giving them that particular fixed picture, they can really explore the data themselves. And we'll see that in particular when we do dashboards, which is next week. So um, this week, we're not going to be using Matplotlib. Um, actually, actually, strictly speaking, if you're using the standalone version that I've been using in PyCharm, so whenever I run uh, videos from, sorry, visualizations from PyCharm, you'll see that the, um, the the matplotlib examples I get are actually interactive. There's some buttons at the bottom that will allow me to do that. Uh, unfortunately, those don't work in uh, Colab and Jupyter. Let me just show you an example of that. So here's, um, here's an example. If I run that, um, you'll find when the, uh, when the example comes up, there's a number of buttons at the bottom, including the home, the backwards and forwards, um, the uh, panning button, and the uh, zoom button and the save button and all of those things can be used uh, interactively so let me just squash that down a little bit there are the buttons at the bottom we've never really used them very much but they are very useful if you want to do you know to explore the picture so uh, the zoom is particularly useful if I want to you can see down this bottom corner there's there's rather too much data I can't really make out what's going on but I can use a box zoom to zoom into that and I then I can zoom into it again and again, okay, and just show the bits that I'm interested in. I can then use the arrows, arrows to go back and forwards between different views. So these are just going back to the, the views that I've already picked. I can go back to the original and forwards to the ones that I've zoomed in on. So that allows me to uh, explore it interactively. Uh, if I zoom in here, I can use uh, the pan button, this kind of, um, arrows pointing in all four directions. I can pan the, the plot and you can see the axes change as well. So I can move it around inside at that scale inside the inside the uh, uh, chart. Um, I can, if I find a, a bit that I'm interested in, so maybe those, uh, those very high, uh, those very high marketing products we saw down the bottom corner, I can save that figure to my uh, to my file system and I can just go back home. So really quite useful um, buttons, but they are a bit limited and they don't work in the notebooks that are so commonly used for this kind of investigation. So instead of doing that, we're going to be using uh, a library called HVplot, which is built on uh, another tool called Hollow Views and um, a visualization, an interactive visualization library called Bokeh. Um, and here's the, from the, uh, the description on the website, it provides an alternative to the, for the static plotting API provided by Pandas with an interactive 
bokeh based uh, plotting API that supports, supports panning, zooming, hovering, and clickable, selectable legends. So there's a bit more available here, and it, uh, we'll see in particular that the selectable legends can be really useful. Um, when you run this in a standalone, so in the, all the examples I will be using in the lecture, what it does is it generates an HTML page uh, with some JavaScript built in. The JavaScript is used for doing the interactive stuff and opens that in the browser. Um, you don't need to know anything about the JavaScript or anything about HTML. It just creates this web page that opens in your browser and then you can explore it there. Um, and you can even copy it onto a website that, so that somebody else could look at it. Uh, if you do this in uh, Jupyter or Colab, we can put we can embed this into the notebook, um, so it's it'll appear there. So that again, it's it's using these same technologies, H, uh, HTML and JavaScript to to provide the interactivity. Um, in terms of the code, all the, all of the examples today will contain similar lines of code at the top. Uh, so this is very similar to what we've seen before. Uh, in fact, reading in the data is exactly the same. However, you'll notice there's a line here that's different. So we're using importing hvplot.pandas uh, rather than importing matplotlib. Um, there's some minor differences we'll need when, if you're using Jupyter or Colab, and I put those on a, a slide right at the end of the lecture. So if you want to, if you want to try this out straight away, and you'll find it's not working in um, <coughs> in your notebook, then you want the, the last the penultimate slide of the lecture. Okay, I think I'll finish there and then we'll look at the first example.